Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton for ID People. I'm here at ID World in Rio de Janeiro and I'm joined by Etienne Grandor. Etienne, good to see you again, always a pleasure. Um, always good to see you at these events, asking questions in the uh, audience as well as speaking on stage. Um, you recently published an article regarding uh, intelligence in mobility and you talked about the second revolution. And I look at the way my children use data and the way they use transport and it's completely different to our generation. What kind of changes are you seeing and what does that mean in terms of demands? Uh, in the year 70s you observe an integration of the different operators which worked at that time mm. on a competition uh, uh, situation. And we integrate that. At that time mm. cities of one million inhabitants create metro. Metro was theoretically reserved for megapolis like London, Paris, Berlin, something. No, Brussels, Milan or yeah. uh, different cities get their underground system. But it was logic at that time to say, okay, we re redesign the networks. It's stupid to keep a bus on surface mm. in the traffic jam and beneath you have a metro with high capacity and high performance. So we re to convert the bus line to feeder to metro, but we need at that time to create the commercial conditions so that uh, you can use this system with only one ticket, of course, and not to have to buy two, yeah. two different tickets. That was the first revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Remember in Paris, uh, they created the Carte Orange, which uh -huh. is the first time that the same ticket could be used for buses or underground. Mm. It was, it was it not was the case before. Yeah. It's the same in London the and the same, cut, it's yeah. the same in Brussels and different cities. So now we are evolving to for different social economical reasons. Monoparental families, mm -hmm. the, the high number of divorces uh, mm -hmm. so that don't, people don't go in the suburbs and come back to the city. Mm. That increase could increase the yeah. uh, congestion, but they don't have the financial means to buy a car. And secondly, they don't consider, as it was 20 or 10 years ago, the car as a social proof mm. of uh, their identity, uh, or, identity status. or status. And but it doesn't mean that they don't want to take benefits of individual transport mm. means. So they turn to uh, shared cars, shared bike, and we say that in French, uh, I don't know the English, the uh, bobo, the bourgeois bohème. Okay. Yeah, so people who are, have no, mobile no permanent pattern of their life, okay. they, they prefer to, to adapt. Mm. To adapt. And, well, it doesn't mean that the smart car will disappear because some regular people Mm. regular uh, user of public transport will remain but the other one said okay today I go with my car to the uh, transit car park facility along a railway station a suburban railway mm. station I go to the city oh but I have a customer arriving at the airport so I hire a small electric car and I come back with this car and they discuss and so on so the, mm. the pattern of the mobility will be adapted according to the circumstances mm. and therefore I think that with the possibility that uh, uh, no appearing with such yeah. tools yeah. you can manage yeah. everything yeah. not only to host the uh, smart card in the NFC, NFC telephone mm. but to have the different system and we need to integrate them. I mean I'm arriving in the downtown at such hour so I can automatically introduce this information into high car, uh, the, the shared car yep. uh, management and so on and so on. That okay. will be the will second be the revolution. Second revolution. Uh, both kind of mobility will be integrated and will be managed yeah. due to such uh, equipment. It's a collision of a lot of technologies, isn't it? One of them, as you say, is this, is this device that we carry around with us that has 
navigation and gives us all kinds of other information. Another one is the way generations respond to it. And another one is the transport network. I, I have an apartment in London, and when I'm in London, I just use public transport. So I use the tube. Uh, there are some bikes, which oh, yeah. we call Boris bikes, that I can rent from outside my flat and I can leave in the middle of the city. There are zip cars that I can hire for as little as one hour for nine pounds. So there are all kinds of options, but I have to look at all these options separately and to be able to have and that's what an integrated yes. and That's what I, I consider the mobility yeah. intelligence for yeah. the future will be the integrated. We have still a lot of job to do to, to look at that. Mm. But it's, it makes sense. Yeah. I think it makes sense to, yeah. uh, to, to be able to manage its own mobility yeah. according to the need yeah. and not having a, a segregation view on no. public transport or private transport. Yeah. No, yeah. We, we integrate both. Yeah. And even air travel and all those other things. Mm. And as you say, the third element is the generational thing. I look at the way my children would, um, and my children are 18 and 20, the way they um, they use transportation, the way they use public services, they expect to be able to find it very quickly. They expect to be able to just click somewhere and see where the nearest available bike, car, piece you know piece of equipment or whatever is, and be able to just bring it together in in this one device. So and furthermore, if you add the real time information, mm -hmm. say okay. I'm arriving at this station and I know that there will be a car available reserved for me. Or I know that this train is arriving with five minute delay or not. The real time information combined with that is ma make a marvelous yeah. uh, global tools. Yeah, and I guess the background to that is not just me as a user, but if, for example, you're a provider of those bicycles or of those zip cars, the data that's collected in terms of movement of people gives you the ability to deliver the right kind of service. And there that you have unfortunately the big problem of privacy because some more inspired people will say okay that's big brother that follow you uh -huh. in the city. Uh, we, we have this morning uh, different uh, 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 experience explained like for instance 1.2 billion people getting a, uh, an identity Antica, card yeah. in India and on the contrary in all countries in Western Europe uh, they said oh uh, the right we have the right to be forgotten Invisible. the right to be uh, anonymous mm. it's, it's the balance though isn't <laughs> it it's constantly that balance between privacy and An security advantage. and privacy and service for example, the, the Indian um, one is a good example because they are being able to um, reach services they haven't been able to reach before and at the moment they don't seem to have that resistance. But in the UK, for example, we won't even accept uh, as a nation, we're, we're struggling to accept an identity card um, as an as a obligatory thing because we consider that to be an infringement of human rights. So there's a constant challenge and it's yes, got, okay. but actually for my again for my children's generation oh. they don't seem at all concerned that they're leaving this data trail in fact they're adding to it by tweeting by leaving yeah, sure. data on Facebook by by Instagram by all these different tools and the the identity for me it means that you exist as a citizen and that's for me the cornerstone of the hmm. democracy hmm. yeah we I, I, I asked a question a question this morning saying remember 70 years ago they call that uh, Nacht und Nebel, I mean night and smog. Yeah. And so you yeah. disappear as a person. Yeah. And that was a yeah. uh, very, very... Yeah. Uh, and you have uh, to have identity, to have representation, yes. to yes. have, you know, to, to manage a democracy. So you're absolutely yeah. right. Okay, well, thank you, Etienne. It sounds no, like, it sounds sounds like pleasure interesting for me. times. <laughs> and clearly there will be, this revolution will will continue to gain momentum and these things will continue to collide as we get more urbanization, more, well, you see, more I have, applications. I have uh, a lot of program yeah. after my retirement this, uh, at the end of this year. So now I'm going to let you retire, Thank you very <laughs> much for your time. Good to see you. Okay, good.